Good morning and welcome to another session of Business Tips at 10. So today I'm with Rhonda Chapman. Say good morning, Rhonda. Hi, everyone. And we're testing our, our new little interview desk and a new camera setup and the sexy microphone setup and we're hoping it all works. It looks good this end, but um, hopefully it looks good. Um, so if you could, if you think these business tips add value, if you could give us a thumbs up, love it, um, like it, make a comment or tag a friend, that'd be really good. So good morning to uh, Sam. Hi, Sam. Um, hey, Sam. Um, so yeah, if you share it around. So today we thought we would talk about, better find the title, uh, why is your website not converting visitors to new clients? So Rhonda and I were just talking before this and one of the things that I say to clients when they're coming on board as a new client, and especially if their budget's tight, like let's get your website done, let's do the stuff with Google because that's going to make a difference to your business. You've got to focus on the things that are going to give you a quick return on investment and then you can reinvest into your website to get it to a higher standard. So one of the things I say, and I was, I was wondering what uh, Rhonda's reaction would be, is... Uh, where I say, look, the, the welcome or the intro message on the home page is going to take up one inch or two inch. So whatever you've got to start mm -hmm. with is the way to go. And Rhonda was sharing some recent jobs that she's done where that's been the case. So Yeah, so um, like we would say, the home page is sort of the doorway of your business website. Yep. So it's kind of really important to get people um, to understand right away when they land onto your homepage, what is it that your business does, what you have to offer them. Um, you don't always have to say how much it's going to cost, but if, um, if you make it clear that uh, people can qualify or disqualify themselves so that they know, yes, I can afford your services, or yes, you are the ones that I want to do business with, mm -hmm. so that they can then um, follow through if that in, involves clicking through or calling you right away, but give them that sense that they can decide right there and then whether you are the right people to do business with. Because we don't want to waste anybody's time and and you, you want to qualify people before they make contact with you. Yeah. So it's very important. Yeah, yeah. And, and basically it's like, you know, five to eight seconds, I reckon, whatever the numbers yeah. are, to am I in the right place? And then what is the next step? Yeah. Um, but getting back to the copy too, because you were saying that um, there's been a, a couple of sites that have gone live without the copywriting yes. being yeah. finalised, yeah. and but that's okay because you know we've got a catch cry here. You know, seventy percent is good to go. Don't try and get it perfect because having the website live is more important than having it perfect because you can tweak, and that's some of the contracts you've done lately. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so you get people that uh, will come to you in panic. And they say my website is live or is about to go live and the mm -hmm. web developers are asking for copy and that was the last thing they had on their mind they thought everything was fine oh yeah we're getting our products on on um, our website listing everything all the uh, pricing and all that but where's the wording or um, where's the about page where's what you want on your contact us rather than just put a form and all that. So people are coming to me in, in panic wanting to find out what they're going to put on their website. Some come with what they've written and all I do is tweak and remove the typos and things like that or make it sound better. Mm -hmm. um, in other cases, those who have a bigger bu budget, they will come and say, I've got nothing can you write from scratch? So that takes longer. So people need to keep that in mind. For someone to write your entire website, it could take days or weeks or even months if you don't, if you don't even have um, a, yeah. you know, the structure for it. So uh, that is one of the things that I say, when, as soon as you're planning a new website, you need to plan what you're gonna say on it. And therefore, whether you start writing before you go to your developer or during the build, it doesn't, it, there's not a big difference, but sometimes the copywriter also can guide the design for the website. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and I know there's been on occasion where I've actually gotten work from you, had, had the work referred, um, because the website was so poorly structured, you 
it didn't matter what copy you provided. Yes. <laughs> it, just, it just wasn't going to work. And, yeah. and I mean, which is commendable to you because yeah. that shows a high yeah. level of integrity with your work. Yeah. Um, uh, what, one is a local business. I'm not sure if I should mention them. Um, don't. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're great business. They've got really good results yeah, yeah. from their website yeah. now. And the copywriting's <laughs> awesome. So yeah. um, anyway, maybe not. Yeah, um, so, so for example, in, in some cases, because I'm very honest, Yes, I'm in business to make money, but I will always be honest with people. Yep. If they come to me and I find it, because I always audit the, the copy, but also look at whether the website is well structured enough for Google to accept yes. everything that you put yes. on it. So if I find that it's broken or it's not going to help with SEO, I will tell the, the business owner, you need to go and fix it. Yes. Before yep. I can, because whatever I put on it, if it's not going to get picked up by Google or anybody, then what's the point? Yep, yep, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, um, and what prompted this topic today? We planned it to do this Facebook Live today. We didn't actually know what we were <laughs> going to talk about, um, but R Rhonda did a uh, Facebook post today. So, if you're not connected to Rhonda um, on Facebook, do connect with Rhonda. Um, and you had a meme and which I stole and copied. <laughs> to, to yes, I think post. it's about Bob wondering, Bob. Uh, and he goes like, crap, uh, my web developer wants to copy and the website is ready to go, but now it's going to be delayed because yeah. Bob doesn't have copy for his yeah, website. Yeah. So don't be like Bob. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, it's interesting because, you know, we've got two websites we're working on now. Well, one we're currently working on, one we've actually gone live with. And the record holder for the longest website to go live was three years and one month. Whoa! <laughs> Seriously, true story. Um, unbelievable. And she's absolutely gorgeous, but she's a perfectionist, and that's why we've uh, adopted this 70% is good to go. And there's another website that we've actually updated. The, the website's live, and we've done an update. We've created a new home page here. Now, the only reason the business owner hasn't gone live with it is because there's three new pages and all she needs on those pages is one or two paragraphs. Ultimately, it should be the minimum 300 words, preferably mm -hmm. five to 600 mm -hmm. words, you know, to uh, get the best results SEO-wise. Mm -hmm. But one or two parag paragraphs is better than nothing, you know, content coming soon, which is ridiculous. The thing is that for business owners, you know what to put in anyway because yes. you have the conversations yeah. every day. Yeah. If it's a, a page about a particular service you're offering, then you have that conversation every day. So don't try and be perfect. Don't try and get it right. Yeah. Just write what you talk and then you can go live. True. It's after the fact that you can then go to Rhonda and get it reviewed and it's going to be more cost effective because you've written down your core message, especially when you speak from the heart. And if you write like you talk, that's going to be far more effective than putting your writer's hat on, as I say to people, and <laughs> trying to write. It just doesn't work. Just write it as you speak it and write from the heart. Then you're going to be in a position to go live with that website or get that new content out there and review it later. I'm always doing edits and updates to my website and, you know, if it's not perfect, you know what, I really don't care because I would rather be further down the journey. Your website's a journey. It's dynamic. It never ends. Yeah. I'm constantly playing and evolving and, you know, some people say to me, like, that's because you're a web developer. You can do that. Well, no. No, you're you not a writer. You're a developer. Yeah. So the, the point is that I've got new content and stuff to share and if I don't have it perfect, well, better to have it live than not. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that was the point Rhonda was making is plan ahead. If you've got mm -hmm. a new subject, a new page, just capture the information, just get just it live. It. Get it done. And you can get it yeah. get it reviewed yeah. and copywritten later. So yeah. um, so do we have any questions? Does anybody want to pop any questions into the chat box? I can see it doing it through the camera. When I normally do the uh, screen sharing, I'm just going to have a look at my computer <coughs> and see if I can switch to screen mode. And it doesn't appear that I can, which is particularly annoying. So, so we I might have it. to do these yeah. sorts of calls via Zoom so I can then switch mm. from the camera mode yeah. um, to be able to screen share. Um, OK, so do we have any questions, folks? Everybody's been really shy. 
that's okay. You can do that. <laughs> okay, so what we'd really appreciate is if you join our group for more business tips. We're going to be doing this every Saturday, 10 a.m., uh, so business tips at 10. So true question, what time is business tips at 10 at? Mm, there you go. Gotcha. Um, hi, Judy. How are you doing? Hi, Rob. Good, Rob. Well done. You need a system. Absolutely. Mm. And that's, you know, building funnels that you can replicate and ramp up and improve on. Um, and, and just on that, um, to drive more traffic is you know that's the holy grail mm. you know because having a website and this is what we see so many people just have online brochures and again that's okay to start with but then you got to look at who's coming to your website what journey do you want to take them on and what is going to cause them to get in contact with you and that's where lead generation yeah. client yeah. client qualification yeah. process uh, processes come into play um, Rhonda I just on another subject your branding change have you settled on the final name yes marketing communicator right marketing yeah because that sort of um, explains yep. everything that I do has to do with how you communicate when you're doing your marketing yeah um, working on new logo and all that but I will launch that after <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. in September. Yeah, I've got a lot of um, planning to do, and also what I'm going to say on my website yep. to make it to reflect that. That's yep. important. And then, like you were saying, with the traffic uh, issue, creating extra content. So, um, if you want to create videos, if you want to create blog posts, if you're going to do Facebook ads, so all that also come into place when you want to bring traffic to your website. It's not just Google that's going to bring you um, traffic because a lot of people just live on Facebook. Your ideal customers could be on Facebook. So if you try and reach people through that, there's a question mm. from Rob there. Yeah, yeah, Rob. So yeah, call to action, Rob. Um, good question. Um, <clears throat> it's the pinnacle. Because one, one of the things that we've noticed, I mean, we've been doing this 11 years. So when back in 07, 08 um, and onwards, you know, the free report, the ebook offer was, you know, the pinnacle, you know, the five things to do this or the seven secrets of whatever. Um, the only thing it's been done to death. And so, and and a lot of the time it's actually been done quite poorly. People, because it's the world of online learning, everybody's learning, they go and mimic and everybody's a damned expert. And oh my God, that does my head in. Um, marketing experts crawling out of the woodwork. Anyway, um, where are the runs on the board people? So the, the point being there that you've got to make it a really compelling call to action. You know, and we're testing at the moment on my own website. If you have a look at my site, I've got to have a look and just check, see what the three call to action buttons are. And I'm testing, I'm evolving all the time. It's not a static thing, it's dynamic. Try something, because you know what, it might yeah. work. Yeah. And if it doesn't, try something else. Yeah. Because you're trying to connect, there's now, I think more than ever, the it's relational. You know, and I liken it to if you're networking, you're not going to get the gig until people know, like, and trust you mm. in a real one on one sure, situation. Yeah, yeah. And online is no different. You've got to try and replicate that, mm. but in an online model. So on my website, I've got, um, I need help. Uh, tell us about your project. And I'm going to move to a little uh, new chatbot plugin I'm playing with. I'm always playing with toys. Uh, request a callback. And they have uh, pop-up forms that people fill in. They're actually, although the forms look the same, they're actually different forms because I want to track, is, are people clicking on I need help and yeah. request a callback? Mm. Which one are they clicking on? Um, and the Tell Us Your Project is a higher level. It's a qualification where I'm actually asking quite a few questions. Yeah. Um, and that helps to elevate the quality of the client sure. because you get tie kickers and you get really serious <laughs> people. So. So I suppose to summarise that, it's just a matter of you trying to hook in, Rob, to, to who your clients are, what journey do you want to take them on, what's going to help better qualify them as a client for you because um, you don't want to be wasting time either and test it and measure it. You've got to measure everything. Measure, it's important, yeah. So many people are just so random. Um, and, and look, it's hard as a business owner, I think, because you, you sort of got to, you know, you wear your production hat and, and you take that off and you've got to yes. wear your marketing yes. hat yeah. and, <laughs> you know, your sales hat. Yeah. And, and it's hard to change. 
and before this today, I, I was reflecting on on the, the Facebook lives I've done. You know, is it working for me? You know, it was a good idea, but is it actually working? Well, yes, it is. We engaged with a client last week who who had some uh, pretty serious problems on a client, and we've we've landed quite a good uh, gig from that. And the win is well, obviously I'm, I've got new business, which is exciting, but I'm also actually able to make a difference for somebody. You know, they've, they've invested quite a bit in a website that's mm. actually just not converting. So it's a win-win situation. Yes, I've got more business, but hey, the client's a winner because we're going to get better results. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I ho hopefully that helps, Rob. Um, yeah, I'm just reading through your message. LS opportunity connect, yada, yada, whatever. Yeah, and look, the, the thing I, I think there is that um, Nobody wants to be sold to, but everybody wants to buy. We're no different, so you've got to look at it from us. If it's an obvious sell, you know, th that's not going to work. It's not going to convert. You've just got to really engage and actually try and solve people's problems um, and be consistent in your follow-up. And look, to be honest, it's one area that I'm actually quite weak in. Because I systemise everything, I have follow-up email sequences which are very personable, courtesy of Rhonda helping me with those. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, and they really do engage and connect, but it also helps me to um, cover my weakness of follow-up. So uh, hopefully that point makes a difference too. Hey, Glenn, how are you doing? Hi, Glenn. Um, I know you from ages ago. Go to website, farm or track new Yeah, I know. There's supposed experts everywhere, isn't there? Um, look, I, I don't, you probably don't want to, publish the website in this forum, but you've got to have a look at the ads, what they are. Look, I'm, I'm running some ads at the moment. You know, obviously we've got a team member who, who handles all of that for us. And I've thrown about $1,000 at it, but I also tried a different forum where, where I actually engaged a, a booking agency mm -hmm. to, to help book qualified clients for me to go out to do a review of their website, whatever. And I did the numbers. Um, and I was initially converting one in three uh, sales presentations mm -hmm. over a longer period of time. I was uh, investing, uh, converting one in five, and it was costing me X amount of dollars. So I took that X amount of dollars and I thought, okay, let's try a different medium, Facebook ads. Now I'm getting the views on the explainer video, mm -hmm. and then I'm also getting uh, the views on the second stage but I haven't converted. So it's a matter of continually tweaking. Where's it breaking down? You know, mm -hmm. you've really just got to look at, yeah. is it getting views? Is it getting likes? I don't even know what the Facebook campaign was because a lot of them are just simply a branding awareness thing yeah. and that's okay. But if somewhere in the process there's not a call to action or a follow-up email or a follow-up phone call or a personal message, mm -hmm. there's a gap. So maybe consider that. I know it's so, probably a bit broad. I find that sometimes it just has to do with changing the image, for example. Yep. I've yes. tested uh, for events. Um, if, if I'm uh, selling to both men and women or if, um, yeah, whatever I do, if I change the image and, for example, uh, making the person in the image looks straight into the lens of the camera, I get more likes and more click through. Yep. Or if I'm talking to women, I put a woman who's smiling and looking at the camera, I get more clicks. Yep. If I'm selling something to that is more attracting to men, then I put images of men because people want to see themselves in ads. Mm. So try and change or even put a cat and see how you go with cats. Not the cats. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's different different yeah. different ways you can test your ads and the content that you're putting on Facebook. Because not everyone mm. wants to be sold to. Maybe it's just a matter of telling a story and sharing some case studies so that people say, yeah, that looks like something I need, therefore I'm going to these guys and ask them for a quote for it. Mm -hmm. And just to give that cat thing while we love <laughs> context for those who don't, don't know. <laughs> no, no, you can't. But you can try. Um, but cats are the highest watch videos on YouTube. Is that the stats? Some, well, that's what some people say. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Cats, dogs, <laughs> yeah, so, so they work. Um, and and some, just on that, because I, um, you just reminded me, as a part of uh, our Facebook campaign, we were running uh, the same app with three different images. And one particular image was a guy similar to this scenario, was a, a young academic-looking dude, pretty hunky, um, sitting at a laptop. And that 
particular uh, uh, image mm. got more better conversions, more click through. So, uh, so you're right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Play with the ads. Hey, Sveta, how you doing? Good to see you. Well, see you. Um, okay, we got any other questions? Rob's asking about links, that links, links. for chat box. Links on a website that gives a prospect option in a chat. Yeah, look, links on a website. So a chat box type pop up. If you have a look at my website, um, Rob. Uh, that's sending more traffic to my website. So just think about that for a moment. Um, <laughs> the win there is I'm getting more traffic to my website. <laughs> yeah. um, and you're likely to stay on the website longer. Hang on, I just earned brand influence from Google. <laughs> and please try and visit more than one page because you visit more than one page, uh, brand influence with Google, mm -hmm. um, which is SEO. It, it's a new um, take on SEO. You know, the more traffic you get, great but you really want people to visit more pages. So you've got to look at the way you have people interacting on your website. We're, we're just about to launch a new website, I know I'm digressing, <coughs> on a local security firm where it has a pop-up contact us quote form, right? Because the bottom line is that's the call to action. People want a quote. You've got to make it easy for them, mm -hmm. right? The current website is absolutely atrocious um, for that. Now, that's great, little pop-up, quick as. Right, so you're getting that interaction, wonderful. They fill in the quote form and it gets sent off and that's the end of it. But guess what happened? They've just come to the website to the home page, they've clicked on the quote form, they've filled in the quote form, all done and they're gone. Well, that just registered a bounce with Google because they've not visited any other page. Mm -hmm. That's big demerit points. The higher the bounce rate, the um, it just doesn't reflect well on your website. So. Like to win the game with Google, you got to have 100 points, but not every one thing equals one point. Okay. It's yeah. really yeah. simple. So, so what we're doing with this quote form is we're then taking them to a success page. So guess what happened there? It's not registered as a bounce. So I'm giving away advanced secrets there of what we do. So be mindful of that. I know I digress. Chat pop-up pop box. So yes, look, we're playing around with uh, chat pop-ups. Um, there's a few that are run by AdWords company that do advanced tracking and they're really sophisticated, they're really great, but they actually add about four seconds to the load time of the website, which is really bad because that's another uh, ranking uh, element that Google apply. How, how quick does the website load? So you've just got to be mindful of that. We were testing one a couple of weeks ago on my website, or last week I think it was, and it was actually adding about two seconds. Um, so I've got a load time of about four anyway. That adds another two seconds. I wasn't really happy with that. So we're actually testing a uh, one that Facebook puts out. Um, it's a native chat box. Um, I haven't really had a long enough time to, to assess it as such. It's working. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's a, probably something we should look at down the track is having sure. a look at yeah. different ways. There's chat boxes that are built into the website and then there's also chat boxes that are uh, external and you put a bit of code in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll have a look at that later. I know it doesn't answer your question definitively, but certainly worth considering. But the other point you can uh, be aware of, we had a request from a particular client this week uh, about a chat box and then I said, well, are you going to be available? And uh, the answer was no. Well, you know, like, no, mm -hmm. don't put a chat box in. If it's not going to, if you're not going to be able to manage it, don't don't play mm -hmm. with it. So I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do that, Glenn. Send, send me a, um, a, a private message and I have actually can do a full audit. Now, in that audit, I think there's 47 points. It's really very sexy. Now, from the audit, there's going to be a lot of things that you can actually do yourself. You know, some of these elements um, are not hard to fix and we assess everything from design down to security, down to graphics, down to call to action, all of the things to, to, to do with Google. So one, one of the cash prizes we've got is uh, play the game with Google and Google will play the game with you. And some of it's not hard, it's not rocket science. You know, quite often we've, we've reviewed a website when we've engaged a client, say, to do SEO and we've checked the website and on, on a mobile phone and I want to contact them and I want to contact them and I can't. Mm -hmm. There's no floating call now button. It's like, are you ridiculous? I've got to scroll down there. Like, wh why would you do that? Um, and even though it's not SEO related, it's outcomes related. SEO is out about outcomes. It's not just about ranking well, it's about getting more calls, getting more inquiries. That's the outcome you want to mm -hmm. achieve. So we sort of have that holistic approach. 
and I've been talking for ages, so I'll give you a turn now. <laughs> but, but actually, just on copywriting, that's one of the things that Rhonda does exceptionally well. There's a really high level of focus on SEO. Mm. I'll take a breath. Yeah. You can say something now. Uh, for SEO, it's, uh, it's more not to put too much of the keywords into your copy, really. Yes. Because a lot of people expect that if I'm going to write for them, they, they expect me to put a lot of keywords. Yep. Um, but yeah, Google nowadays, they uh, look more at whether you're more relevant and that the the copy is actually keeping people on your website. So, um, and, and what people want is something that is more natural and that speaks to them so that yep. they, when they're there, they get all the information they need and they know why they should buy from you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, okay, I think we'll call it a wrap today. So if anybody wants an assessment on their website, send me a private message or add the website link in the comments thread, whatever it is mm. you want to do, and I'll do an assessment. Um, it's, we normally charge 275 and we actually really do normally charge 275 I'm not just saying that. It takes me uh, over an hour to do it. So, but for the people who listen in here, I don't mind doing that at all. So, uh, and like I said, there's gonna be some elements that you may well be able to do yourself. If I can help you to get better results and make more money, you're likely to come back to us and yeah. say, hey Pete, mm -hmm. you do the stuff that I can't do and I love helping people to do the stuff that they can do. And Rhonda does yeah. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you heard before how Rhonda shared with her integrity about, hey, I can't actually help you until you get your website done, then I can help you with better results with the copywriting. Yeah. So, um, simply, uh, okay, good, good. Thanks, Rob. I'm glad that makes a difference for you. Good on you. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I'd recommend you do is join our uh, group on Facebook. It's called Smart Tank Mastermind. Um, I'll put a link in the thread, but if you just, um, Google, Facebook, Smart Tank Mastermind. Smart Tank as a takeoff of Shark Tank, yeah. yeah. Um, not at that <laughs> business level yet, let me tell you. Um, but if you think a friend or a colleague will benefit from this, tag them, share this, uh, like it, give me a thumbs up, give me love. Um, and I also take a get this uh, Facebook Live transcribed okay. and I create a blog post about it. Um, and I will load that to my website. I'll also download the video. I'll upload that to my website. We also load it to YouTube. You see a trend there to leverage everything you do in business. You should get more than one outcome from it. So I hope this helps and we hope it makes a difference in your business. Have a great day and go and work smarter. Thank you so much. Have a good day.